Well, hello, everybody. This is Byron King with Investor Intel. I have the great pleasure today to speak with Stephen Bariga from Romeos, R-O-M-I-O-S, uh, Romeos Gold. Romeos has a variety of properties uh, all over the place, but uh, especially in British Columbia and in Nevada. Uh, hello, Stephen. It's good to see you. Uh, real quickly, tell the viewers out there, what do you have that's so special in BC, British Columbia, and what do you have that's so special down in Nevada? Uh, and then, then, we'll, then we'll nail a little bit further on what you're talking about. Perfect. Well, thanks very much, Byron. It's great, it's great to see you. Uh, in British Columbia, in the Golden Triangle, we have over 400 square kilometers of claims. Uh, last summer, we were very, uh, very excited by the results of an IPMT program, which highlighted a very significant target of a copper porphyry structure. And this was the missing piece that we needed in order to sort of layer up the data to show the potential partners that we had something of significance. So uh, the year prior, we had identified over a kilometer wide epidote alteration zone that was then overprinted with the stockworks that ran over 800 meters of distance. And those stockworks came back with some really high grade gold and, and copper uh, results. And then we applied a mag survey that we had previously flown in the area. And we realized that there was some really some strong potential um, um, plutons that could power, could be responsible for powering this area. So we decided to, to take a very deep breath and spend our favorite $500,000 on an IPMT program. We shot uh, three lines of MT, two east-west and one north-south line, and then we shot one line of MT. MT is used for your audience. MT shoots and shows a very deep picture. IP gives a very high definition, uh, limited to around 650 meters uh, image below. So what the IP picks up is sulfides, and you want high grade, high high volume of sulfides. Hopefully, it's mineralized with copper. So what we ended up finding was a very large over 800 meter long target that uh, that fans out, once you hit about the 200 meter level, it fans out to being 500 meters wide. And then the IP, uh, the MT, excuse me, show that it went down over two kilometers. That was so the first in, target identified and uh, very significant. And I've been in, in conversations with various groups to introduce this information to them and to show them why they should be excited about potentially partnering with us. So this is in the Golden Triangle. And this who, is who in the your, Golden Triangle. And who is, who is adjacent to you up there? Who or what is adjacent <laughs> to you? So the location of our properties is primarily along the southern boundary of Galore Creek. Okay. So Galore Creek is a massive undeveloped mine. Uh, it's been known for 60 years. Uh, it's a joint venture currently currently owned by Tech and Newmont 5050. And they've been putting in infrastructure. So uh, there is a road that they've built, partially built and cleared, which actually intersects our Trek block. So Trek South is only about a kilometer and a half away from an access road. And it's only about 10 kilometers away from their proposed mill site. So from a lo logistics perspective, location matters, especially in a place like the Golden Triangle. So we've got, excuse me, we've got a great target. It's in the right location. Um, it's within an area that is known for very significant large scale porphyry structures. And uh, while, the, while the target, the main target I've mentioned for your audience was the first that we identified, there's actually three additional smaller targets that were, that were, that were shown on this IP program. And then as you move western, westward from uh, Trek South, You've got a VMS system, a very significant VMS system adjacent to it, and then another potential porphyry structure that we've yet to actually do significant work on. So that's, in a nutshell, why I'm excited about the Golden Triangle assets currently. Okay. Uh, we, we could talk about it all day, but we won't <laughs> because we're going to talk about Nevada. What do you have in Nevada down there? So we have two core projects in Nevada. One is in, uh, in the northwest quadrant. It's called SCOSA. It's at the intersection of the sleeper sleeper trend and the rye patch trend. Essentially, where, this where, is, where is it geographically? What are, are we? What what cities are? What where are we near for all? all uh, Winnemucca would be the closest city to uh, to Scosa. Winnemucca. Winnemucca. Okay. So we are due west and a little bit south 
from a, a neighboring perspective, there's the Rosebud mine, there's Highcroft in the neighborhood. Um, Scosa was a former producing mine. It was operational in 1930 to 1941. Average grade of, of ore that came out of the mine was over an ounce per ton. And uh, you know, this is an asset that's been on our books since 1999. The, uh, the initial drill program in 2000, we drilled some bonanza grade intercepts of you know, close to two meters of 168 grams per ton. Um, you know, the, the numbers were, were quite extraordinary. And uh, we did a little bit of, that was diamond drilling. We did some, some uh, RC drilling, some deeper holes. We, didn't, we intercepted the vein system, but we didn't hit any grade. So we've we've really looked at the data and we've, we've rethought it. And we believe what, we, what was missed was the fact that there's a very significant boiling zone. And anything above that has the potential for this high grade mineralization. So we need to get back with the drill at SCOSA and we need to drill to that boiling zone level. And as we intercept all the stacked veins that we've identified of which there's over 10, we're able to, we, we, we believe that that mineralization is above that. Now they only ever mine 400 feet. Mm -hmm. That might leave us with at least another thousand feet of potential high grade mineralization below it. So I'm excited about SCOSA. Uh, I know our time is limited. I wanted to talk a little bit about Kincaid as well. Mm -hmm. So Kincaid is now along the Walker Lane trend. So now you're down in, in Southwestern Nevada and uh, it's just east of Hawthorne. Mm -hmm. We staked that uh, just after I joined the, the, the company two Septembers ago. There's 109 claims in total, uh, about 3,000 hectares. And it's a tale of two, two, uh, two different types of mineralization. The northern half of the property, which is historically where there's been the most work done, they're, they're tracking large scarns. And that type of scarn structure is being mined at the Isabella Pearl Mine about 15 kilometers away, due east of us. The southern half of the property uh, was a it was a great surprise for us when we first started exploring it. There is just countless former workings, and each one of these operations at the opening of every adit in every trench that we identify, every pit that has been found so far, we find this unbelievably high grade copper mineralization similar to this. I'm showing this to your to your mm -hmm. audience here. This particular piece ran multi multiple percent copper, high grade gold. Um, and it's usually high grade gold, high grade silver, or else sometimes a, a combination of both. But the copper is the persistent common ground for, for everything that we've assayed so far. We haven't drilled it. We haven't even been to all the targets yet. So far, we've identified, I believe it's 16 that we've hit so far. And there's probably another 20 to 30 that we still need to get to. So this, uh, this year, we'll have boots on the ground. We're going to identify each of those targets. We're going to do the basic groundwork that needs to be done. And then that will help influence and, and identify a priority target list, and then we'll get to drilling. So Kincaid, early stage, and then SCOSA, follow-up drilling on a former producing gold mine. That average grade was over an ounce per ton. Okay. Well, we could, again, we could talk about it all day, but our, you know, this is a, this is a little squib here for the viewers out there. Uh, Romeo's Gold, R-O-M-I-O-S Gold, uh, trades on the Toronto Venture and in U.S. over-the-counter. Um, terrific, uh, very, very early stage exploration targets in the Golden Triangle of BC. And then you've got these brilliant uh, 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 claims in Nevada. And just for the people who out there, a lot of this prospecting and mining that was pre-World War II was shut down during World War II by the National Mining Act or whatever it was called. You know, we're not going to mine gold. We're going to fight the war. And then a lot of this stuff never got uh, reopened for some strange reason. And along the way, uh, you know, Romeo's managed to pick up the claims. So Romeo's Gold, uh, they, they have a website, they have presentation, uh, a very, very undervalued uh, share price right now in my in my view. So and we'll also much, be Steve. present at PDAC. So please uh, don't hesitate, yeah. come by the booth and uh, we can... Uh, we can provide you with more information on the company and uh, and the excitement that that's uh, that we're looking forward to in 2023. PDAC 2023. Stop by. Stop by uh, Romeo's. Speak with Stephen. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Byron. Great to see you.